Oh, good evening. Good evening. Sorry, I was daydreaming. <laughs> We are live, we are live. I didn't realize I was live. Thank you to everybody in the chat room already. Appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, hello to everybody. Tick tack attack, what a quality name. Good evening to you, mate. Uh, Chris, always um, always welcome. I haven't watched, uh, I know a lot of people are gonna ask me about this Josh Cronkey interview, yeah? I know a lot of people are gonna ask me about that, but I'll be straight up honest, yeah? Somebody tweeted me. Um, good afternoon to the two moderators in the chat as well, VP and Sergio. Good evening to you guys as well, Tom and Darius. Um, I know a lot of people are going to ask me about this Josh Cronkey interview, right? Um, somebody asked me about it on Twitter about 10 minutes ago. And um, I briefly read through it, but there's no way I can remember everything he said. And obviously I'm streaming on my iPhone. Um, and yeah, I, there's no way I could remember it. Hence why I haven't spoke about it. But um but I know that he replied and he said that something along the lines of the club is at, um, isn't is at a crossroads or something. Um, that was pretty much the gist of what I got and they're actively trying to win trophies. So, um, so yeah, I, I can't really go into depth on that. It'd be stupid for me to do that without having read the whole thing properly and digesting it and reading it a couple of times more. So, so yeah, I thought I'd talk about a transfer, a bit of positivity in the building. Um, there seems to be a lot of negativity around the club at the moment, so I thought I'd go with the positive. And the positive is, apparently, we've sent um, medical staff to go and do a medical on Everton Suarez, um, which is something that I'm over the moon about. If it is true, then um, we've got ourselves a very good player, providing he passes his medical. Um, I can't see any reason why he wouldn't pass a medical, but... Um, but yeah, loving the car content. Do you know what? For the next couple of weeks, it's going to be car content, bruv. Yeah? <laughs> Listen, I've got no signal where I am staying. It is just a joke. So, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to be in the car for the next couple of weeks, um, apart from my morning videos. But yeah, it's all about the Datsun. It's all about the Datsun pool. I, I come to Spain just to get the Datsun, bruv. You know what I'm saying? I could, I couldn't. I've got to go all over the world in the Datsun, bruv. In fact, that could be a good vlog, isn't it? Yeah, the Datsun Diaries with Lee, travelling the world. But um, no, I've got aircon on, man. But anyway, yeah, Everton Suarez. Um, you know, listen, Edu obviously knows a hell of a lot about the guy. Um, he, he knows of his quality, obviously, having worked with him um, for the last few seasons um, with the Brazilian setup. So obviously he knows of his quality and he ripped it up in the Copper America. He was absolutely amazing. And like, listen, I'm not one for looking at YouTube videos and... Um, saying, oh yeah, the player's great because he looks good on YouTube video. Um, but at the same time, if you go and check out some of the stuff this guy can do, it is ridiculous. Like, seriously, the, guy, the guy's got four players around him and he just nutmegs three of them and runs off. It's just a joke. Um, so, listen, if we, can, um, if we can get him and the reported fee is £25 million plus add-ons. So, you know, we've been linked with um, Carrasco. We've been linked with Ryan Fraser. We've been linked with Wilfred Zahar. Um, we've been linked with Malcolm. So, you know, there's a lot of players that we've been linked with in that position. Now, who is the best one out of them? I don't know. It's a toss of a coin, let's be real. You know, any of them could come to Arsenal and turn into a superstar, but every single one of them could also come to Arsenal and fall flat on their face and flop. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get too carried away until this deal is over the line. I'm not going to get overly excited, but it is exciting being linked to a player of that much technical ability and that much skill that knows how to score goals and knows how to be direct. Anyone who watched the um, the highlights of the game last night as well, or stayed up even to watch it at stupid o'clock in the morning, um, I didn't. I chose against that. It would have been three o'clock over here. Um, but I um, I see the highlights. The, the second goal, I can't remember the kid's name. What an absolute screamer that was absolute banger just pull it on his right and pinged it straight in the top corner and our future's bright we've got a lot of talented young kids right and um i know that everton suarez is 23 years old but he's nowhere near his peak yet and look at what he's doing right now he is absolutely smashing it up and you know the fact that um we've already signed martinelli who by the way scored in his debut last night i know it's not his proper debut if that makes sense but it was his first outing for arsenal a little bit fortuitous, come off his chest, but even so, he looked lively in the highlights that I've seen. And I see a little highlight clip of the um, of the footage of the game, and he looked absolutely fantastic. And I said this to people, a lot of people didn't really know who he was. I didn't know who he was. 
But I done my research on him. I investigated. I, I looked at some clips of, and videos. I spoke to a very good friend of mine who's a journalist at ESPN um, over in um, uh, Paraguay. And um, he's an Arsenal fan and he always DMs me. And I spoke to him and he said, Arsenal got itself an absolute baller with Martinelli. So, you know, I can only go off of what he says. He, he watches him. He's seen him for years growing up. And he said he's, he's very, very good and very direct. And, you know, that's where I based my thought process off of, you know. Um, so, listen, Martinelli from the clips I see is exactly what my friend told me. He, um, he said to me that he gets the ball down. He, he gets his head up and he is so direct and he can go left, he can go right, he can jink past people, he can score goals with his head, his left foot, his right foot, even his chest last night. So um, I think that he's somebody who's going to get a lot of games. He did miss two sitters, KS1, he did. I see the first one, he's got to bury that, mate. But you know what? That'll come. Listen, he, he was probably um, very nervous starting in his first game for Arsenal, all eyes on him. 18,000 people in the stadium is probably a record crowd for where he's played before. Um, you know, it's um, all eyes on him. A lot of Arsenal fans have travelled over from England and all across the world, and it was a sellout crowd. So, so yeah, listen, it's not easy to ever start a first game for Arsenal first team. I know it was a kids' team essentially, but you're still representing the red and white of Arsenal. And um, so, yeah, I thought all three of them, um, Baki, Sanya, um, uh, Saka, even Sanya, Bakari, Sanya, Jesus Christ, the sun's gone to my head. Um, but yeah, Saka. Um, from what I see, looked like he was the outstanding player on the pitch. He looked absolutely fantastic. And this is the thing, right? When you've got players like that, which is... I know Everton Suarez is like three, four, five years older than some of these kids. But when you put these people into a situation like that, they either sink or swim. And a lot of them kids stood up and were tested last night. And a lot of them stood the challenge. Saka looked outstanding. Martinelli looked outstanding. The young lad whose name I can't pronounce, who scored the banger, the second goal. Jesus Christ, man, that could have won any game on its own so you know there's a lot of players out there and if we add another Brazilian into that which I think that um I think that Edu wants to try and get this Suarez deal done like I said the medical staff are going to meet him going to do a medical with him and hopefully that'll get done in the next couple of days and um, we'll have a little bit of positivity you know the um the Adidas kit came out today the yellow one the second one um a little bit gutted actually because I'll be straight up right I went on to Adidas and somebody had posted on Twitter there was a discount code, right? 25% off, and it worked. Yeah, so the kit was 48 quid instead of 64 quid, right? So I thought, right, I love that. I thought, I'll go down the beach, have a bit of grub, I'll come back and I'll order it. I've come back and they've dis disabled the discount code. So, so yeah, 65 quid later, the yellow kit's on its way. But, but yeah, there's, um, there is an awful lot of negativity around Arsenal at the minute. And that's why I thought, like, listen, I didn't really have time. I only just see the Josh Conkey interview. Um, so I couldn't really digest that and, and get it all in my head to then go and do a stream about it. So I thought I'd go with something positive, you know. There seems to be so much negativity around the club at the moment. And I get it. I do get it. Like, listen, we're a massive football club and we spend £6 million. And um, people are starting to lose their shit about it. Which, you know, they're entitled to do that. I've, I've, I've put a series of tweets up saying that, look, um, as much as I'm not as um, cronky out as a lot of people are... Um, Yes, ideally, I don't want him as owner, but I ain't going to lose my shit over it. I've put all my time and effort and, and screaming and shouting into getting the old regime out. And, you know, now it's time for me to chill out a little bit. I'll back anyone who wants to protest. Um, James Oli Inca, there you go. Thank you very much, um, Hoff, Hoffa. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, listen, anyone who wants to protest, I'll happily back them, yeah? I ain't going to slag them off for doing that. If they want to do that and I say they feel they'll get movement, then cool. Um, and if people want me to to um, promote their protest and retweet it or speak about it on stream, by all means, I'm open to do that. I did that with Turkish. Um, I tried to get Turkish's um, protest out there. And I'll do that for anyone. If, if anyone tags me in anything on Twitter and wants me to retweet it, cool, I'll do it. If I see it, I'll retweet it. It's simple as that. Um, but I won't be a part of it because I just want to go and watch games. So... Now, if people think that I'm part of the problem, then cool, crack on. I really don't care what anyone thinks. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to talk about football rather than talking about side issues right now. And um, and the football last night was fantastic, and we're linked with a fantastic footballer. So, why not be positive, you know? It's easy to be negative. I've been told that for many, many years of trying to get the previous manager gone. Why are you always negative? And now it's, um, now it's the flip side. Now I'm... Now I'm part of the problem, apparently. So, yeah, there we go. Anyway, um, let's read some of these. Datsun videos fun. Cheers, VP. Uh, what if Arsenal wins a lottery? 
Um, but I think we win the lottery every match day, mate, when we get about £100 million um, in revenue over the course of the season. Um, Andrew Hibbert said he watched it. Well done, mate. Nice one. You've, uh, you've got better stamina than me, bruv. That's for sure. Martinelli is a baller, says Brandon. If, do you know what? I said this, right? Listen, the guy... The, I know it's not lagging, so stop even trying winding me up, bruv. I know it's full 4G signal. There's no way it's lagging. Um, but yeah, listen, I know that Martinelli is a baller. I know he's a baller, yeah? Whether he can cut it in the Premier League is a different story, but he is an absolute baller, and he will do big things for Arsenal, I think. You know, and he's going to be that unknown quantity. A lot of people are not going to know how to defend him. He's going to go up against a lot of right-backs this season that are going to be baffled and bamboozled by how much skill and talent he's got. But not only that, how quick he is off the mark. Yeah, he is absolutely rapid over five yards, ten yards. So, so yeah, it all bodes well. And listen, it's always nice to see Arsenal win a game. I didn't obviously watch the game live. But, you know, to, for Arsenal to go and win a game against... Um, an established team out in, in Colorado. Yeah, fair play to him because it was a team full of kids. I think Callum Chambers was captain. Uh, there was a meltdown and everyone booing about Mustafi and I think that's muggy. Um, I think it's muggy to boo somebody when they're on the pitch. I've never done that if they play for our team. I've done it when they play for the opposition, but I think it's a little bit muggy that when, um, when Mustafi puts the armband on, people are booing that. But that's just my opinion. Listen, people can do what they want on their match day. It's their match day. You know, who am I to tell people how to enjoy their match days? You know what I'm saying? If people want to, um, if people want to boo the players, boo the players. That's up to you. You paid your money. You can do what you want. Let's read some more of these. Let's read some more of these. Uh, uh, to me, Ian Ketia was playing to impress, as if not to say, don't send me. As if to say, don't send me on loan. So, Joe, I'll be honest. I didn't really see much of Ian Ketia in the highlights, but. Um, I'll take your word for it, bruv. Obviously, you watched the game, I take it. But, um, but yeah, listen, Eddie and Ketty, I think, will go out on loan. I think Saka will go out on loan as well. Um, I think he probably should go out on loan. I don't think he's quite ready yet. I think maybe a season or two. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Um, is Zaha coming? <laughs> I don't think that's happening. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. Everton over Zaha. Zaha is just hype, not worth half of what Palace wants. Um, couldn't agree more, Darius. Couldn't agree more, my friend. Um, Anderson says Nick. I think. Well, I think he's joined. Um, I think he's joined Leon, mate. I think that um, went through in the last couple of days. MW says John Jules was very lively. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Um, I think he's another one that ain't quite ready yet. But um, listen, he played well. And Katia played well. Best player after Saka says Chris. Listen, anyone who's watched the game and is telling me this, I'll take your word for it, because like I said, I didn't watch the full game. So I've only seen a three-minute highlights reel. So, and that was basically just um, a couple of chances they had and then the goals we scored and a couple of chances we missed. So I don't get the full, all-round, um, you know, notion of the game and how it went. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyone who's joined late and is asking me if I see the, uh, the Josh Kroenke interview, somebody texted me about it. Sorry, tweeted me about it, about five ten minutes before i started this stream um so i searched it on twitter and i see the um i think it was charles watts put up a um a written copy of it so i sort of filtered my way through it but obviously where i where i'm staying right now i've got no signal so i had to drive down here to get this done for six o'clock so i sort of skimmed through it when i get back i'll have a proper sit down and read it so anyone asking me if i've seen it i have seen it but I can't tell you really what it said, apart from the fact he thinks we're not at a crossroads and they're in it to win it, basically. So, so yeah, um, Salmin Omar said, I woke up at 4 a.m. to watch the game. Bruv, you're hardcore. <laughs> you are hardcore. What's the reported fee for Everton, says Hayne. Well, the reported fee varies depending on which outlet you believe. Um, I've seen a report saying it's £36 million. I've seen other reports saying it's £23 million. And I've seen other reports saying it's £25 million up front. And then the other 11 million will be done over installments. Um, I'd be inclined to go with that, the 25 up front and then the 11 in installments. Um, I think that that's probably where we'll be with it. Um, but I don't know if I'm being honest. Um, obviously, we won't know unless it gets fully completed and goes through as an official transfer. So, um, so yeah, but I do think it will go through and I do think he's a fantastic prospect. Listen, he's 23 years old. He's playing in Brazil um, for Gremio. And like I said, I'm not one to watch highlight reels and, and jizz over a player, but this geezer, mate, he's, he's, um, he's as skillful as Neymar. 
Yeah, he's not as good as Neymar before anyone starts clipping it and saying I've said he's as good as Neymar. He's not. Um, he's not as good as Neymar. But um, but he is very, very technically gifted and he can just walk past people. Uh, I've seen a clip of him in the box. There was four players around him in the box. He nutmegged three of them. Yeah, and then just pinged it in the bottom corner. It's like, bruv, you're taking liberties. These people, these people have got families, bruv. Yeah, so listen, if that is done and it is true and, and we have sent delegates like it's being reported to um to go and do a medical with him, then that is absolutely fantastic business. <coughs> and um, that means we'd have options on the wing. We'd have Martinelli on one side, uh, Reese Nelson on the other. We could go with um, Iwobi on one side. We could go with Suarez on one side. So then we've got four attacking players that can actually run at people and actually dribble past people carrying the ball 50, 60 yards. As it stands right now, we've only got Alex Iwobi and Reese Nelson. Obviously, Martinelli's only just come in. So, you know, um, is he going to get a load of game time? Is Reese Nelson going to get game time? That's another thing we need to think about, you know. Um, are we going to buy this guy and then going to come and loan out um, Reese Nelson again? Who knows? But for me, Martinelli, Reese Nelson, Iwobi and this guy, I think that's more than enough in attacking threat. Um, add in a Wobi, um, sorry, add in uh, a Bamiyang and Lacazette, um, Mikatarian and Ozil if they're still here, unbelievably they'll probably still be here. You've then got enough attack, attacking power to go forward. Then we need to go and sort out the defence. And listen, I think that should have been our first priority. I think we should have gone for a centre back. I think we needed a centre back and we should have identified one way before the transfer window opened. So then as soon as it opened, we announced a centre back and he's on the plane to America. Um, but that's just how I would have done it. Obviously, Arsenal ain't thinking like me. They ain't thinking like most of the people that watch my streams or anybody on social media that wants a centre-back. So, it's an Arsenal works in mysterious ways at times. Uh, cute smile, Guna says, what's up, Lee? How's Spain? Um, well, Spain's still there, bruv. Look, I don't know if you can see that. Can you, can you see that? That's my view. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty mad. I'm not going to lie, yeah, but it is roasting hot and the air quality up this high. I'm, in, I'm pretty much at the top of a mountain, bruv, which is why my signal's pony where I am um, so I've driven about 300 yards I suppose down the mountain um, where I actually get a signal but but yeah it is really nice mate it is very nice it's so hot as well so so yeah I'm, I'm loving life right now if I'm being honest um, yes um, Mike's with two Z's I have covered the conky comments I haven't seen them properly I've seen them but I I see him literally just before I was leaving to come and do this stream so I can't comment on them, mate. Um, maybe that could be something I speak about tomorrow after I've read it tonight, and we could maybe do that at five o'clock tomorrow. There will be no nine o'clock stream tonight, unfortunately, um, unless I drive back down here again and sit in the pitch black, which is not something I really want to do, if I'm being honest. But, so yeah, anyone who's asking me about Kronky, maybe we'll go through that tomorrow when, when I've read it and digested it and, um, and understand what he's saying and then put my spin on it and my take on it because listen as people know who've followed me for a very long time on this platform but also on my other platforms and my previous youtube channel i say what i see if people like if people don't like what i say that's cool that's fine debate it don't start getting aggy and moody about it but you know i just say what i feel and my opinion i ain't the messiah i ain't the you know i i ain't got no inside knowledge on the club or anything like that but at the end of the day, I'll give an honest take on how I see it. And if people don't like that honest take, well, that's up to them, isn't it? We'll stand at the game today. Um, I don't know. I don't know, mate, if I'm being honest. I'm sure people in the comments will let you know. I didn't watch it. Um, Ordain Cooper says, I watch your stream daily, Lee. You keep things real. Thank you very much. Stop moaning. Talk about Arsenal, not you. No, I'm going to talk about me just to wind you up for the next five minutes. How's that sound? Yeah, as soon as it's my stream, I can do what I want with it. What do you reckon? Should we talk about where I've been today, what I had for dinner and all that? Come to Bajiktas. Do you know what? I've been I've been to um I've been to Turkey a few times. I've never been to Bajiktas, but I've been to Turkey a few times and it was stunning, mate. Um I had uh, a nice um a nice Turkish lunch in um a, a little shop. The guy was trying to f sell me a fake Rolex, yeah, he was plying me with food and drink. And in the end I still left with nothing. Yes, Kronky was at the game, apparently. Kronky said us fans should be excited when he was asked about transfers. Surely he's taking the piss, says Finlay. Listen, like I said, anyone who's joined late and heard this three times, I'll go through that tomorrow. 
um, the five o'clock stream tomorrow. I'll, I'll read it tonight. Um, I'll read it a couple of times, um, and I'll go through what Cronky said, um, how he's put it across, and I'll just give you my spin on it. Um, whether that be positive or negative, I'll, I'll tell it as it is and how I see it. Some people will agree, some people won't. That's up to them, but I'll just keep it real. Also, my daily transfer update will be out a little bit later than 9 o'clock. I know I've been trying to get them out for 7 o'clock, but it ain't easy, man. This heat just knocks me out. It's the night time, I'm asleep, yeah? And then um, I record them when I wake up. So sometimes when I'm at home, I record them the night before and schedule them um, if there's enough to talk about. But... Um, but yeah, here, the heat's killed me, man, like in night time. So um, they've been getting out about sort of nine, half nine. But tomorrow I'm driving to Marbella to see a mate of mine. Um, he's got a villa in Marbella. So <clears throat> I'm hoping to leave Torrex where I am right now at about seven o'clock. Um, so my transfer update ain't going to be out until about 11 o'clock, I'd imagine. So, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. Let's do, um, let's do another 10 minutes worth of comments and questions. Come to Cape Town, town you pale ale. <laughs> Do you know what? I've never been to I've never been to South Africa, bruv, and that's somewhere I've always wanted to go as well. So yeah, one day that could be a thing, mate. What are your first impressions on Martinelli? Says Gareth. <coughs> well, my first impressions before I even see him kick a ball um, were that he's very direct and he's very skillful. And um, yes, he's very skinny. He's very slight. He's very short. Um, but he's got bags of ability, and ability can now out muscle anyone mate so you know, it doesn't matter how big and, and um, physical you are if you've got bags of ability you can skin somebody just like that do you know what i'm saying so um having seen his goal and seen a couple of sitters he's missed and some of the little bits he's done in the game um i think we've got a decent player there for six million pounds but i'm not going to get carried away with it it's a pre-season friendly against a dead team in colorado so yeah, we can't really. We've done this before with Jeff Adelaide and others, and um, Zellerman and all them sort of players. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not going to get over over um, over excited about it. But I do think he is going to be a big part of our season. Come to Jamaica and have some real Jamaican rum, bro. Trust me, that's another place. A friend, I've got, I've got a couple of friends in Milton Keynes um, that I've grown up with that are Jamaican. They always say the same thing. Even Troop says it to me as well all the time, bro. He goes, the, the rum in Jamaica's next level. Yeah, you can get good rum over here, but yeah, I can imagine the rum back home is mad, bro. So, mate, listen, the, the amount of places I want to travel to is unbelievable, mate. You just got to get the money to do it and the time off work. Um, Salim, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, well, it's good morning to you. So, good morning, my friend. Um, your signal situation reminds me of when I went to Ethiopia for a visit. Looking forward to seeing the team at open training today. Um, listen, bruv, I've never been to Ethiopia, so I can't comment on the um, on the signal situation, but I can only comment on um, on what it's like out here. And when I'm at the bottom of the mountain or halfway down or quarter of the way down, it's sweet. When I get to the top, it's dead, bruv. I'm literally up in the gods. So, so yeah, and um, listen, anyone who's watching the open training, good luck to you, man. Now, I see a lot of, um, a lot of people were at the game last night. There was 18,000 people there. Um, which is mad. It is actually mad. 18,000 people turned up to watch our reserves, our under-18s, yeah, and our under-23s. Yeah, I know there were some big players that come on towards the end of the game and stuff like that, but when you actually think about that, 18,000 people rocked up to that game, not knowing what the team was going to be, they just wanted to watch the game. Um, and that is the draw that Arsenal have as a club. And that is, um, I suppose that's part of the frustration from fans, is we're that big all over the globe, why don't we start spending like a big club? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Isn't it how ironic how Koscielny said we play for the badge in the Adidas adverts? It's Sergio. Um, yes, yes, mate. And do you know what was funny? He was saying it to the reserves, to the kids. And look at the example he set to them. It's a disgrace, mate. Um, do you rate Kabalos? Um, not really, mate, if I'm being honest. Um, that was from Dagmari. Um, no, I don't, if I'm being honest. I think he'll flop in the Premier League. I think he's a little bit too lightweight, mate. Um, and in the position he plays, you need to have a little bit of physicality about you. Um, I don't think he's got that. Um, our Napoli favourites for Tierney, says Nick Hart. Um, well, that's the report that um, is going around today. Jim White reckons he's received a text from somebody close to, to Celtic um, that Napoli are, are going to come in and they're going to outbid us. So, I don't know. Listen, if it's a choice of going to Arsenal or Napoli, no disrespect to Napoli, he's coming to Arsenal. Um, but if Arsenal don't get a bid accepted, which apparently we've been led to believe is being accepted, 
then um, and Napoli's bid's the only one that's accepted, then he's going to Napoli. It's as simple as that. But if Arsenal have a bid accepted and Napoli have a bid accepted, he's coming to us. It's as simple as that. We can offer more money, bigger exposure, bigger league, better players are, um, in the league. Yeah, maybe not so much at our club compared to Napoli. They've probably got probably better players than us so as a collective. Um, we've got good individuals, but we haven't got a collective unit like they have. But why would he go there? He don't need to change anything um, in England. He, he can still speak the same language. He don't need to pick up Italian. Um, the, one thing, <coughs> the one thing I will say is Naples is a beautiful city. I've been there and the food is amazing. So maybe he does fancy going to Naples. Who knows? Um, yes, they do have Champions League football as well to the people saying that. Um, thank you to 750 people nearly watching live. Please do stick a like on the video. If you're enjoying the content, not even 70 likes yet. Come on, people, you're slacking today. Slacking. Is the Everton link real, says Rash Ab Ganesh. Um, well, I hope so, mate. A lot of outlets are reporting it, and um, you can only go with what's out there. So, yeah, I'm hoping so. And, I, and listen, if he does come in, I think he'll be a, a wicked player for us, man. He'll be somebody that we have needed in that position for so, so long where he's just so direct, so technically good. And I'm, like, I suppose the last player we had like that was Alexis. Yeah, I'm not saying he'll ever reach them heights, but he's got so much ability, it's unbelievable. And listen, if he comes in for 25, 30, 35 million, whatever it may be ending up being, um, then I think that represents good business because he's only going to kick on and be better, in my opinion. And if he does do that, you've got a dilemma because in a year or two years' time, Real Madrid and Barcelona come calling, and most South Americans want to end up playing for one of them two, don't they? So you either sell for a massive profit and then reinvest into the team, or you refuse to sell and you've got yourself an absolute baller. So I don't know. I hope it. I hope it is true. <coughs> Jr. Ward says, "Kidnap Messi and bring him back, bro. I could get him in the boot. Is that small?" How's the holiday going? Says Benjamin. It's going very well, thank you, mate. Very well. Very hot. It's really hot. I've got the air conditioning. I'll turn it down a little bit, otherwise you wouldn't hear me. But um, but yeah, it's going really well, mate. Free realistic signing, says Davar Hill. Um, free realistic signings. Well, Everton being one of them. Um, I'd say Ryan Fraser, another. And centre-back, I don't know, maybe Dunk. They're realistic, I suppose. Um, the last time I'm going to say this for anybody who has joined late, I have not officially read everything that Josh Conkey said. Um, I will do a stream about it tomorrow. How's that? Five o'clock stream tomorrow, we'll speak about Josh Conkey's comments here. Yeah? Because um, I know a lot of people want to know my thoughts on it. Um, what with me saying that I ain't really um, blaming him as such. So a lot of people, um, a lot of people would love to know my comments on his comments. So. So yeah, I'll, um, when I drive back up in a minute to the villa, um, I'll have a little look on Twitter, I'll read the comments, I'll digest it, I'll read it again tomorrow um, when I dro after I've driven to Marbella. And um, yeah, the five o'clock stream, I'll speak about Josh Kroenke. How's that? How's that for everybody? If you want to see that, stick a like on the video. How's that, eh? <coughs> Let's do um, two more minutes and I'm going to get myself out of it. I feel like Edu has hit the ground running, says Cali Brandon. Do you know what? He's actually done really well. I'll be honest with you. He's come in and he's obviously brought this young Martinelli lad with him. That's a, that's a given. If Everton Suarez goes through, bruv, that's him as well. Yeah, that's him all day long. So um, the two sign-ins would have been his sign-ins. So, you know, a lot of people um, said that Michelin's hat was, um, was the guy that signed um, all the players that have come in and stuff like that. So if that's the case, then so you've got to give the credit to... Um, you got to give the credit to Edu Gaspar as well, haven't you? So, you know, the way I see it is, is um, you know, we've still got three weeks of this transfer window to go. Um, we've we've got to pull Sank out of the bag. We've got to get rid of players there. There's too many players at this club that shouldn't be it. We have got to get rid of players, and um, and that needs to hurry up pretty quick. Edu is back and things are on the up, says the game. Um, Evans Gash, Jesus, what a name. Um, says we need a centre back, bruv. We probably need two, but we've got about five at the club, so we need to get rid of a couple because, um, you know, Mustafi shouldn't really be here, let's be honest. I feel, do you know what? I actually felt sorry for him when I heard that people were booing him when he got gave the captain's armband. That's muggy, man. That's muggy. I felt a little 
a bit sorry for him. Listen, whether you back him or not, I don't back o I don't back Ozil or don't rate Ozil, should I say, yeah? When he's on the pitch, yeah, I will back that geezer till the hilt until he's off the pitch. Yeah, then I'll give my opinion on the guy. I don't back Mustafi, but when he's on the pitch, yeah, I don't rate him when he's on the pitch, yeah, for 90 minutes. Yes, I have kittens every time the ball goes near him, but I still back him. You know, when a player's on the pitch, that's when they need the support the most. When they're off the pitch, say what you want about them, yeah, that's cool. But my take on it is, if the player's on the pitch, you back them whether you rate them or not. And that's how I've always been. Um, you'll never see me boo a player that plays for Arsenal when they're on the pitch. Never. <laughs> I know he got given the armband, but seriously, you shouldn't be booing him, man. That's just my thought on it. You don't look so bright today, golden boy coming. Bruv, trust me, yeah? If, if I could just show you, like, full length, bruv, yeah, trust me, I'm golden child. Three days, golden child. My face might be a bit red and my nose a bit red, yeah? Golden child, bruv. Hot box with troops for a podcast. That might be a plan, you know. <laughs> Although I don't smoke. Are we being priced out by Celtic, says Daniel DeCosta. I'm not sure we are. I think, it, listen, negotiations. A lot of people don't work in business or sales or a, an, an environment where you negotiate with people, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I've done that all my life. I've sold double glazing my whole life, yeah? I go into a customer's house, right? They want to pay four grand for it and I'm at 12 grand. Eventually, after three hours of negotiating, I've sold it for eight grand. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, it, with football transfers, we're talking millions of pounds worth of money here, not four grand, eight grand, 12 grand. So these things take a long, long time, mate. Uh, and it's not, it's not easy. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Mate, my face is red because I've been out in 36 degree heat today. That's why. This is roasting up, brother. Look, 50 shades of red, isn't it? Right, last three questions and I'm going to go. Before I go, please do stick a like on the video. It's still over 710 people watching live right now. Um, subscribe if you're new as well. I will be back tomorrow. It'll probably be about 11 o'clock for transfer update. Um, and then I'll be back at 5 o'clock. We'll speak about Josh Cronkey's comments tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Um, I'll do my live stream on that. That'll be live from Marbella. Pup, pup. We're going to Marbella tomorrow uh, to the posh ends of Spain. Um, not that I'm very posh. I'll probably learn the time when I get there. Any snakes today? No, I haven't seen a single snake today, you know. Xhaka will prove you wrong this season. Um, well, I hope so, uh, Sayog Kale, because I've been waiting for three seasons, mate. Fair play for doing, continuing doing the videos on holiday, bro. Keep up the good work. Yeah, nice one for that, Max. Listen, I enjoy doing videos. Um, you know, Robbie's out in uh, Colorado. He's still putting videos out, isn't he? You know, so... You know, there's other people that are um, that are taking weeks off work and stuff like that, or take a day off work, and they still produce content. You know, at the end of the day, I enjoy doing videos and I enjoy speaking to people. I enjoy getting feedback from you lot. Um, I enjoy people challenging my comments and stuff like that. It's nice. It's good, man. So you know, that's what football's all about. And at the end of the day, it's not my job. It's it's a hobby, and and I enjoy doing it. And it's something I'm passionate about. So just come in Spain. What's half hour out of my day, man? 33 minutes, I can drive back to the villa and chill. So, so yeah, it's all good, man. Right, two more comments. Two more comments. Come on, let's get the comments in. Have you heard anything about Kalazanak leaving? I honestly haven't, Emin. Um, I honestly haven't. Um... Honestly, haven't. <laughs> All right, we'll end up on this one. We'll end up on this one. Gershwin Smith, good evening to you, mate. Thanks for your question. Fraser or Everton? Um, both. One on each side of the pitch because Everton is that talented. He can play either side. Um, he can play down the centre as a centre forward as well. Um, and then Fraser can play left. So I'd take both. And the cost of both would cost, what, 60 million quid all in if you were... If you believe the 36 million being the top price for for Everton, so about 61 million, 70 million tops, you get two quality players. Um, so yeah, there we go. Thanks to everybody who watched live, over 750 at one stage. All bang a like on the video before you leave. Um, if you want to follow my socials, Lee Gunner 82 on Twitter, Lee Gunner 82 on Instagram. Um, so yeah, if you uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's cool. I ain't going to follow anyone back on that because I don't like the platform. If you want to follow me on Instagram. 
uh, DM me, LS for live stream, LS. Um, it'll probably be tomorrow. When I read that DM, I'll follow you back, yeah? How's that sound? Um, so yeah, cool. Any, everyone have a wonderful um, Tuesday evening. Thanks to everybody in the chat room, everybody in the comments section, all the donations as well. I appreciate you as always. I'm gonna go and have a couple of Cervezas and I'm gonna leave you all in peace. Laters, people.